All right, this is coloring, coloring the face, uh, or just coloring skin tones in general using uh, colored pencils. Now, I like the, the Faber Castle here. I love these pencils. If you want to get the little blenders, if we have them, uh, this Prismacolor, you can. If you want to use Prismacolors, you can. Um, uh, Prismacolor has some really decent colors. But sometimes I think that they're, they're, the coloring is too intense. I like the more subtle. So we're going to talk about flesh tones. I want you to layer your colors. I know a lot of you might argue and say, hey, uh, life isn't that way. But yeah, you're building off life here. To get a more intense color, you're going to need to layer your colors so you can have a nice vivid color. Okay, uh, a lot of artists like will paint my hand, and they might use different techniques or different color theories to paint my hand, but it could still look realistic, even though it's not the exact hue or the exact color my skin tone is. A lot of artists that look at my skin tone, they normally use reds and yellows. I have uh, a lot of, of yellows in there. Okay. I normally, when I do uh, stuff in my studio, I normally start with a green. And uh, some of you might have seen the stuff that I brought in that I do. You know, I start with a really light green, and then I put a vermilion over top. Uh, today, I'm not going to do that. I am going to uh, do a little backtracking a little bit, and I'm going to actually start with a purple. And... You can see here, I already have an outline of the face. And uh, I'm going to just kind of start, I'm going to start with the lips. And I got my photo resource here. And I'm just going to lightly go. Remember, you can always go darker, but you can't really go lighter. Trying to erase it is, doesn't quite happen the way that you would want it to. So... Uh, his lips starts real dark here and then lightens up. So we're going to darken that up. He also has some lines, so I'll put some lines in there. That texture of the skin. Okay, and I'm not going real dark. I'm just barely, um... Barely touching the paper. Go underneath the nose. You can use the side too. I like using the side for trying to cover large areas. Uh, it makes it go quicker. You're just wanting you to tint the paper. Because we're going to build, we're going to build darker. Black should be the very last color you should use. Black is a color that should be reserved for the very end and be used sparingly. I understand and recognize that a lot of you think that just putting black down is like, oh, it solves everything. No, it, it really doesn't. It, it makes your yellows look green and nasty like baby poop. And it's really not a great way to shade. Greater way is figuring out your color scheme here. And layering your colors and building them so that you get a nice gradation of color. The value that we learned about prior. And blending the colors together to create a wonderful, wonderful piece of artwork. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is use the complementary tone. And I'm going to put some yellow over top. The yellow is pretty light. Just like I use red and green. We're going to see how this works. I haven't tested this out. Uh, some artists do this. 
So we're just going to add some yellow and see if we can't get a darker tone. And I know what some of you are thinking, that looks nasty, Mr. Rote, but we're just adding some stuff in and it's not the end result. I haven't practiced this beforehand, so I have no idea exactly how it's going to turn out. I do know uh, that I know a lot of artists that have used purple as their primary shading color when they do their artwork. And they thought I was crazy for going with green. But I've, I've used ochre and burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a great reddish brown that you can have added to your um, colors to do flesh tones. You know, everyone wants to go think peach, but actual artists just don't take peach out of the coloring thing. Uh, they create it and they mix their own colors. And they have to understand color theory and layering colors, you know, to get the desired effect they want. Again, I am just dragging. I'm not pressing hard everywhere. If I want it darker, I'll press hard. But I am not pressing hard everywhere. I'm putting the color real lightly and we're layering the color. We'll think about shadows, midtones, and highlights. And you can see, it's already looking pretty interesting. Uh, I think the color that I'm going to compensate with it is, uh, I think I'm going to go red. See how that works. I'm going to start with the lips because the lips are red. And I'm letting the natural color of the paper peek through for my highlights. I'm going over some of my lines with that purple. And you can see how the lips are starting to come together quite nicely. You'll still see some of the color, um, and that's all right. I want to take a dark blue, purple that up a little bit to get the shadow. It's knowing what colors that you can mix together to make it darker, to make it lighter, to help get that shadow, that form. Midtone and highlight is always good. Let's add a little bit of red in the skin tone here. This might not be a bad idea and technique for if, if and when we do a duotone. Now I'm going to go in with a tan or a brown. Going dark in some areas, going over, letting all those colors bleed through on each other. Remember you want to start light and then go dark. And you can get a nice tonality. And it doesn't matter if you can see them close up. It matters how it looks from far away when your eye blends everything together.
you know, take some time and look at it from a distance. You're supposed to view a piece of art about seven to eight feet away so that everything kind of blends in. Now I'm going to go with the dark brown, add some more shadows. Get that nostril going. A little bit darker here and there. You can see I'm not pressing real hard, I'm just shading it in, tinting what I've already tinted and building on that. That's all you want to do is just you want to build on those colors. You got some here so I can do some nice wisps, kind of get the hair in there. So I'm just doing just little dagger strokes with my pencil. to get the coloring out of the mustache. And then the last color that I want to use, and I want to use it sparingly, is black. And let's go in, just add a little bit of black to get a little bit of separation. A little bit of black on the nostrils. Put a little bit of wisps here and there with the hair. Now they have a white pencil, which I rarely use. Probably add that in the hair a little bit, give a little reflection going off. And you can see that we're starting to get shadows and so forth and getting the skin tone. We're just building color on top of color. Do you have to do it this way? No. Can you come up with your own way? Yes. As long as you're layering colors. You can make it as complex or non-complex as you want. But we want to layer the colors. We want to let the natural color of the paper peek through. So that we, we have our, our composition and then we can color everything in. This is what you're going to need to do for the colored pencil.